In this video, we'll go over how to download and install a custom font onto Windows. And I am using Windows 7. Some of you may be using uh, Windows 8 or a different version of the process. In most modern versions of Windows, it's going to be the same. So it shouldn't really matter. And I'm going to start off with uh, having already downloaded the font. Uh, most people can get to this point just fine. And by default, most browsers download your files to your downloads folder. Uh, this could be different on some systems depending on if something's changed it. Uh, maybe a person changed it or maybe some third party software could have changed it as well. But most of the time it's going to end up right here in this downloads folder. And so uh, what I have here is the Samantha script font. And uh, it, you can see that it's a compressed file. I'll go to View, Large Icon, so that you can see this. See how the folder has kind of a zipper on it. That means it's a zipped, compressed file. And so there are multiple files in here that are all zipped up together and packaged as one bundle to be downloaded. And in order to install the font, you have to first unzip that file. And most uh, new versions of Windows has this built in. Uh, some systems may have something like WinZip or 7-Zip or something like that on it as well. But in the basic version of Windows, it will unzip files for you. So the way to do this is to right click on it and you click on Extract All. And you should then get this box pop up and it asks you where you want to unzip it to. The default is it will create a folder under the same location where you're at, as you can see, I'm under my uh, downloads folder, and so it's going to create a new folder by the name of the file. So if that file was called 123.zip, it would create a new folder called 123. So it's pretty basic. And I'm going to extract that file, and then it will normally just open that folder up for me. Now, unzipping and extracting is very important. You don't want to install things typically without unzipping it first. So now that we're in this folder, we'll look and we'll see several files in here for the Samantha font family. And a lot of times you'll see TTF files or OTF files, and sometimes you'll see both. And if you only have the TTF files, those will typically work fine. You can just install those. If you have the OTF file and the TTF file, you'll typically want to install the OTF files. Uh, the OTF is just a kind of a more modern version of the TTF file. It can contain some more features. TTFs were developed uh, by mostly you know, Macintosh and Apple users that were uh, very selective and needed exact precise control over things like the, the size of the, and accuracy of the font for desktop publishing purposes. The OTF is, is, a, is a little bit more involved, newer standard, and most of the time you just install that and everything's going to work great for you. Now the way you can install this, you can do two things. One, you can either right click on it and click install, or if you double click on the font, you will get a preview of the font, the basic characters. Now of course there are many, many others uh, using the char Windows character map that you can access. And Like with the Samantha font, that's how you get all the, the fancy curls around the edges and everything. You have to select the alternate characters. So. Uh, here I can even print out a preview page to have on hand, or I can click install. Now I'm going to click install. Now my system already says I already have this font, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and reinstall it. But most systems, if it doesn't have it, it's just going to say, are you sure you want to install it? And then you would select yes, and you'll see uh, just kind of the box come up and go away. Say so it's installing it, and it's finished. And now uh, if you go into your applications or more specifically design space when you change your font you can search for it and you'll see that those fonts are now installed now if you're logged into design space or any other application you'll typically have to log out of those and close them out and then reopen them for them to read any new fonts in so be sure you do that I hope this video has been helpful if you enjoyed it please click like share and subscribe